Hey guys, it's Chris from Survive and Thrive. Today I'm going to be starting uh, some of my lashings. Uh, this is going to be the first video I do for lashing. Uh, it's going to be tripod lashing. I feel like it's a very useful thing to learn, uh, even for basic people, uh, people who are just getting into bushcraft and things like that. Uh, you can utilize the tripod over a fire to hang a pot and different things like that, cook food. So I'm going to be showing you how to uh, how to tie or lash a uh, tripod together. Okay guys, so uh, to do to make a tripod, what you want to do is the first thing is you want to get three poles that are about the same length. So let me just put those together there. If you notice, these poles are about the same length. Now, if you were doing this over a uh, fire, you would want to uh, make sure it's green wood. These aren't green wood. They're dead, if you couldn't tell. So, I'm just going to set this camera up in the best angle to record this. Okay, guys. So, uh, I'm just going to get right into this to show you how to tie it. Um, what we're going to be starting with is actually a clove hitch to start our tying. Um, if you notice, it's a different rope than what I use in my knot series. Uh, what I use in my knot series is uh, boat rope. I just use the white rope to give some contrast. It's thick. But when I lash, what I like to lash with is uh, sisal rope. Uh, you can actually get sisal rope in rolls of 50 feet. on. Uh, this one isn't open yet. In rolls of 50 feet for like 8 bucks at like a Home Depot or a hardware store. Um, I personally like it for lashing. That's just my personal preference. Okay, so this is going to be our starting pole we're going to be starting with. So that means our clove hitch is going to go on it up top. So we're just, I'm just going to do the shortcut clove hitch. If you don't know how to tie the clove hitch, um, I have a video on that in my knot series earlier in this thing. It's kind of a uh, need to know for uh, lashing. Okay, so I have that all tied nice and tight. So the first thing I'm going to do, since my rope is on top here, coming over the first log, I want to go under the second one and then over the last one, and I'm going to come around it. If you notice, I'm doing a weaving pattern. Okay, before I continue it for you, I just want to point out I forgot to cut it. I cut my rope. I just cut it. I gave myself a good amount of rope to work with. Uh, that's for the way I like to do tripods. Also, if you have leftover rope with the tripod, it's no big deal. You can use that rope to hang in the middle to hang stuff from. So anyway, since I already I started here, I went under the middle one and over the last one. I'm going to come back around this last pole to loop around it. And it's just going to be like weaving. Let me just feed this through. I normally don't tie these on the ground. I'm just trying to just trying to show you guys. Okay. So we started here under this one, over this one, or around it and back up through here. And we're just going to weave through the rest. Now when you're lashing, you're going to want to keep these tight, uh, just to keep the poles together. Now I'm going to do this, and if you notice, it's going to create an alternating pattern. I'll show you in a second. This isn't the tightest. I'm just trying to space it out so you can actually see what I'm doing. So it's not all clumped together on top of each other. All right. So if you notice, we're starting to get that alternating pattern. you got one here, two on top. And I'm just going to do it. I usually make sure there's three on every one at least. Three loops on each pole. Sometimes I do six. It depends on what I'm using it for or my mood. For this video, I'm only going to be doing about three or four on each pole. So I'm just continuing the weave process through these logs. Just roll that out for you so you can see. 
so right now I have, I'm counting, counting this as a loop, the starting thing here. I have three on my outsides and two on my insides for the way it's facing. So I'm just going to go one more. I cut off way more than I need for what I'm trying to do. But I left this nice and loose. Normally you'd want it so they're almost pulling on, they're like literally on top of each other like this. Uh, you can space these out a little bit um, for the way I'm doing it. So now I'm going to come just to create this last loop here. I'm going to come under here. Now this is this is something I need to show you. I need to move this to show you. As I'm coming down here, I'm going to flip this over. This is the back side now. And I'm pulling my rope through. What I'm going to do... Now I'm going to start frapping. And now that I'm done, these I'm done with my loops. Those are all the loops I want. I'm going to frap. So remembering this is the back of the thing now. I just fed it through after my last frap, my last loop. And now once I get it here, I'm going to pull it over the top. So it comes like that. And now we're going to go back to the front so you can see this. And I'm going to clear my clove hitch. <sighs> And I'm going to pull down and go back through here again. So I'm going to turn it over. So now we're coming through here again. Now once you do this, these fraps are the most important part of lashing. They actually tighten it. So I'm pulling as tight as I can. And I usually do three fraps. I usually do a frap for every loop. So that's what I'm gonna do here. You can already feel this. And if you notice, if you can see that tightening, it's pulling these loops together. And that's gonna happen. It's what you want to happen. So let me just clean this off for you. This is my third frap. You want to try to make it so the fraps aren't on top of each other either. If you notice, I'm trying to lace it so you're at one, two, and three. But it's not always something you can do. Right, so we're just going to come back this way. Pull this through. And then I'm just going to... Now, this is the back of our tripod. So now to start the frapping on this side... Once I have the three here, I'm going to go over the middle one and push the rope through just like we started doing the first one. So I'm going to flip this back over to the front. And now I'm going to pull my rope through that I have left. And I'm going to start frapping this side. So I'm just going to feed it through here. I'm not going to keep turning it this time. I think you got the idea. So, that's one frat. Nope. Two frat. Make sure to maintain pressure or tension on this rope as you're going around or it'll loosen up on you. And that's three frap. Now if you notice, I finished on the bottom here. That's where you want to finish for this. Um, because I'm actually going to be finishing with a clove hitch with what I started. So now I'm just going to tie a clove hitch right here. My rope's being stubborn. There we go.
If you're not used to sisal rope, this stuff will burn your hands. You get some rope burn on it pretty easily. Just trying to keep this clopage really tight. So that's why I'm Alright, so I'm just gonna Now another cool thing about sisal rope, so this is my finished product. It's not the prettiest lashing I've ever done. But the thing about sisal rope that I like so much is that if you actually put water on it, it actually shrinks a little bit, so it will tighten up. But now we're just going to stand up, stand this up and set it up. I got some extra rope to hang in the middle, so it works perfectly. So uh, just hang in there as I reset the camera so you can see all this. Okay guys, so uh, here's my tripod. Now what I'm going to do to open this, let me get this thing out of the way. What I'm going to do to open this is I'm actually going to take the middle, middle pole and pull it away from the other two. So, here we go. It's going to be stiff. It should be stiff. This knot should be tight, so it should be stiff. Now, if I were to have a fire pit, I got this extra rope. What I'm going to do with this extra rope is I'm actually going to tie a bowline in it. Now a good way to test your uh, tripod, uh, one way to test it to make sure it's good, it should be able to do this when you make a tripod for this purpose. It should be able to hold your body weight. So if it can't hold your body weight, then you didn't do it, you don't have the right poles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab right here and actually... If you notice, I have my body weight completely on the tripod. So that's something you want to do to test it before you start your fire. Um, just so if you're hanging anything on here, you know if it can support your body weight, it will ha it will support anything I you can put hang, on it. Really. I can put a pot hook in here and hang my pot. Also, if I want to pull something higher up off the fire or anything, I can just. loop my rope around and it will get shorter if I want to put it back down and so on so there's a bunch of different things you can do like that okay guys so uh, today I showed you the tripod how to lash it how to make it um, how to test it alright so I think it's a, one of the most useful lashings you can learn it should be the first lashing you learn uh, you can utilize it very easy you don't have to use anything elaborate to build uh, this is the first lashing I learned to do just because you can now you have a station to cook over your fire and stuff like that just remember as I said before if you're going to use it for a fire make sure this wood is green the poles you use are green wood uh, you don't want to be using dead wood because these can actually burn I'm using dead wood um, I wouldn't use this over a fire but uh, yeah that's your basic tripod uh, there's some things you can do with the tripod if you make two of them you can put a pole across the top. So I don't know if you can see the top in this video. Yeah, just about. You can put a pole across the top and now you can hang clothes on it. You can, uh, if you're hunting, you can actually tie up the skin and scrape it off, things like that. You can hang various things, fish. If you're fishing, you can hang all your fish across it, let them dry out if you're gonna do that. If you're, or if you just smoked something. There's a bunch of different uses you can use for it. So yeah, that's a tripod. If you have any questions regarding tripod lashing, uh, any uses for the tripod, anything like that, feel free to email me. My email will be in the description below. Um, I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours. That's my goal. Uh, I say that in every video. <laughs> so thanks for checking out my channel. Thanks for checking out my video uh, for all your support. And I uh, hope to see you around.